Okay, uh, hello everybody. This is uh, Old Cane. I bought it at the thrift store for I believe like five dollars. I do not know what type of wood it is, but it was not the best wood to carve. I got a Dremel 4000 with a Dremel flex shaft. Um, this video is for the very basic beginning wood carver. If you want to get a walking stick or a old cane from the thrift store, you can carve it. And I'm just going to kind of show you what burrs I used. Um, I filmed this. This is a cuts. First of all, this is a cut saw. It's the silver one, a taper burr. So I'm going to start carving this with that, with my flex shaft. Uh, I use a foot pedal for on off for my Dremel. So I don't have to keep turning it on off with my hands, obviously. I wasn't, I just want to apologize beforehand. Like both these carvings don't turn out too great. Um, I did this carving two days after, two or three days after I just had a tooth pulled when I came back from Vancouver Island. And I think when I did this video, I had something called dry socket. So I was in quite a bit of pain. Um, I wasn't carving to make a piece to fit in the museum or a crazy piece. I was just carving to get my mind off of the tooth pain. So that's why I was doing it. So there's that, that. So when you do the walking sticks or the thinner wood, my least favorite videos to carve for YouTube are walking sticks and canes because you can never show the whole piece in the video. And the walking sticks that are already bent like that are kind of a, kind of a, um, it's kind of bothersome to do it because it's hard to turn around in the channel, keep everything with the flow. And I do speed things up to two times the speed here. For all of you that want to carve wood spirits, the very beginners, like I said, this is a very beginner Dremel carving. I have lots of beginner wood spirit um, videos in my playlists. Some of them are series. I should probably do one. I'd like to hear you guys' opinions, what I could possibly do for Dremel carving. In my, the room upstairs where I, this is, I'm laying it out for the beard and I just spin it and do it as a, uh, sorry, that's for the mustache, well, and the beard. I just spin it and do it as a positive flow. It's, this is very basic and trust me, anybody can do it. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I'd like to hear some ideas for Dremel carving videos. Oh, I was saying that I cannot, sorry, it's been a couple of days for me. I cannot Dremel carve too much upstairs when it's super hot outside because the, my Dremel carving room is like a frigging sauna. So I can't sit up there and sweat when I'm carving. It's just unenjoyable. I'd rather sweat and do chainsaw carving. So these last, this is kind of a story time video. Um, the voiceovers aren't my, I didn't do any talking when I carved these two. You'll see the walking stick I got coming up here. Um, what was I saying? So my buddy Joey, uh, he's been my friend since kindergarten and Tyler, he had, he has family still in Ladner where I live, British Columbia, Ladner. He's, he had to fly down because he, his uncle just passed away, his uncle Jim. And I knew um, Jim pretty good too. Well, Joe lost his sister at an early age. Um, he lost his mom two years ago, and then he just lost his Uncle Jim. Now, Uncle Jim lived on a farm here in Ladner. Ladner's like a farming fishing town. He lived in a little old farmhouse. And when we're talking old, we're talking old, like a rundown little shack. He lived in there for 20 years. Um, Joe's two uncles did fly down from uh they live in nova scotia that like find the will and life insurance and all that stuff i don't need to get into that but i'm gonna say that his house was it's just kind of a reminder check for myself to try and keep my place clean because if, if i all of a sudden pass away you know i don't want to people saying holy this place is a friggin' disaster where Jordy lives. Like we're talking his place had spider webs everywhere and they didn't um they didn't find his body for th three weeks till after he passed away. So I don't know if any of you people have had that kind of experience, but it's not very pleasant. You know, they have to fumigate the house, they have to cut out the carpets because I guess well we'll just leave it at that. Uh, fluids drain out from the body. And, um, yeah, so, and he wasn't a hoarder, but he, he had a lot of stuff. Like back in the day, 
he used to watch that uh, home shopping. Here's a Cutsall Extreme Flamber. And um, here's the, this is a piece of Arbutus too. So I better title this video story time. I've got a funny story I can tell after. So um, what was I saying? Um, I should have break stuff down before I do these voiceovers. He, um, he, he, he used to watch the home shopping channel before Amazon and all that stuff. So he'd buy stuff while there. He had tons of stuff in boxes that he never even opened or used. He collected knives, like all sorts of folding knives. I don't know, like I got a couple good ones, but there's like he had a big box of just these cases of like cool looking knives. Like they're made in China, but valuable, Rick. So I got some of those too, and I'll just kind of hand them out to friends. And um, I, you know, it's like the brothers that came down from Nova Scotia don't want to. Um, take too much back they, they they're taking his truck that he had and i think my buddy joey's getting his car he had like a i think it was a ss i forget it was like a 1968 uh something ss i forget oh, i've never really been a big car guy but it's a super nice muscle car so joe's gonna get that and take that back to winnipeg um joe was the closest with his uncle out of all the family members still alive but it's a sad situation i've had to deal with lots of um death this last i guess month and a half so it's life it just shows i'm going to be 50 uh, next month i'm 50 on august 17th if anybody wants to wish me a birthday on august 17th the big 5-0 if i make it so <clears throat> this video has been on my to-do list for a couple weeks now i think a week so i'm just kind of getting it done and uh, hi everybody, I just want to say thanks so much for all the support and stuff like that when it comes to this channel. This channel is based on not like, um, well it's for carving, duh, obviously, I'm saying duh to me. But it's, it's, I made this channel basically for bits and burrs because it was not really, I think the only one really using the power tools, like uh, the bits, was Kevin. Well people were, but the only ones I watched was uh, Kevin over there at Sticks and Stones. And he does lots of wood spirits. See, look, I was filming out a screen there, and um, I don't know. You guys can look at my playlist, How to Carve Wood Spirits. I'm going to talk about these bits here for a minute. So look at these bits here. You see there's two different sizes. There's a big size and a small size. These are metalworking burrs. This is what I first started out with before I learned, like, uh, cut saw, saber tooth typhoons. These are the metalworking burrs. Now you can buy them now. So you can buy these burrs now, so you get the bigger ones, then you get the small little detail burrs, <clears throat> excuse me, in the same package. Don't be confused. Now, the one in my hand right now is a uh, aluminum cutting burr. So this is the upgrade from the metal cutting burrs. These things are, they don't remove wood that fast. They do cut clean. They are good to have in your arsenal. But these aluminum cutting burrs, I really suggest them for people in the um, foreign countries that can't get... Um, or different countries that doesn't can't get the cut saws or saber tooths or the type the Fordham burrs like the with the spikes or like the cut saws are called the typhoons. So there's the two different ones. So the one on the right's the metal working burr, and you can see how much more aggressive the aluminum working burrs are. And they work great for hardwood. And I think you get like sets of ten of the aluminum working burrs or the metal working burrs for like I don't know ten bucks on Amazon. I believe they're in my Amazon store. So here's the little one. It's got uh, wood in there, but that's like a little detailed metal working burr. Now I'll show you the size difference. So there's a bigger metal working burr and a small metal work. You can buy those the little detail ones. You can get them on sets. You can get them on uh, sets of ten on Amazon for like twenty bucks or something. But you can buy that set that has the bigger ones and the smaller ones too if you don't have that much money. Just spend some time looking on Amazon. But this is the ones you get sets of 20. You get all, see the little tiny round one? I like the um, flame shaped ones, but there's a little round one. You get all different sizes of shapes. So I'm kind of, uh, when my my thing stopped, I, my microphone stopped, felt, stopped working, and all, all of a sudden I heard a bunch of screaming outside. <clears throat> this happened five minutes ago, or 10 minutes ago. And I went out there, and it's my buddy Rob's, um, actually Joe, that I was talking about his uncle passing away. Joe's staying at Rob's place. Rob was married to Joe's sister that passed away. And um, his daughter was, I guess she's a little teenager. She's 
made of, she's, um, I call her Pocahontas. She's a little princess, but I think she was, had too much to drink tonight. She was screaming and yelling at her boyfriend. Now a bunch of cop cars are outside. I had to refrain her, refrain, like grab her and tell her to take it easy. It's okay. It's okay. You know, the way drunk kids are these days. Well, when I was a drunk kid, I was a freaking terror. Now here I am being the adult. Take it easy. It's okay. It's okay. And the cop comes. The cop comes. He starts. There's like five cop cars out there right now. I'm not going to take a picture. But I, 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 the cop comes and he puts a flashlight right in her eye. She's screaming and yelling, cop, calling the cop a bunch of names. But there you can see the little detailing work done. So there's a story for you. It doesn't ever end. The sto story of my life, always a story. So I said to the cop, I said, can't you take her, put her in the cop car, or take her to the street or, because I live in a uh, townhome complex, or take her into her house, leave her out here screaming like this with the friggin' flashlight pointing in her eyes. What do you expect her to do? He's like, oh, I don't know, I don't understand what's going on here. I said, she's a young, drunk girl. She's freaking out. I'm refraining her. She wants to swing at everything. Anyways, the, after they're still out there, she's in the back of the cop car. But the cop comes up and he goes, "You're," um, I'm, I said, "I'm kind of like her uncle," and I was just refraining her, trying to get her to calm down. He's like, "Oh well, uh, can I get your number and stuff in case I need to talk to you about this after your information?" So I gave him my name, but then I gave him the wrong phone number. He goes, "So can I call you?" I says, "No, nah, that's probably a good idea not to. I don't, it's, this isn't my business. I was just trying to help the situation." So anyways, you can see that these little, uh, sorry everybody, <clears throat> and this video is a story time video. So that's that. Um, you can see how the little, don't expect to remove lots of wood with these little burrs. But they're great for detail. You can see it's removing the wood. Um, <clears throat> so back to Joey's uncle's house, we got all the big stuff. Um, we got all the big stuff taken out, the coaches, and uh, they had to cut the carpet where the, I guess the body fluids leaked, it leaked all over the house. It was, they had to cut the carpet and in the, in, it leaked into the bedroom. He passed out on his chair. Okay. So he passed out on his chair, looking at the TV with the, the curtains on the window wide open. So the sun beat again with the heat on in the house in the summertime and a heat blanket on him. So you can only imagine what, um, you know, what happened to his body decomposing, but let's not think about that. I'm sorry, everybody probably don't even want to hear that. But so anyways, I was super jarred when I first showed up there. Joe was there and I said, I'm here to help. And I brought my dolly and I thought I was super jarred, like lifting up dressers and moving them around. No problem. I saw old heavy wood dressers. And I don't know. Now it feels like I got a popped rib, the whole right side of my body, left side of my body. It feels like push my ribs it feels like there's a broken rib anyways and i got some of his knives i'll show you the knives you go rick i bet you i got more knives than you do now they're just cheap chinese things but they're they're kind of neat little knives to have in your pocket or whatever so there's that so you can just see i'm kind of taking my time i wasn't really focusing too much filming this it's putting some age lines up there and like i said you know, this is just a very basic wood spirit. I can't carve too deep on this cane because you got to remember people are going to be putting weight on it. So you carve too deep, you, you know, you could put somebody could put the weight on it, the cane could break. So here's the walking stick. <clears throat> I enjoyed carving this much more than the cane. I don't, I forget what they make the cane wood out of, but it was kind of like a wide grain. I think walnut or something. I think they make those canes in England, I believe. I'm just kind of refining his uh, bottom lip. Digging deeper because... Um, well, I got another funny story. I don't know if I should tell it. I just, I'm just i not a big fan of doing these voiceovers. I'm sorry, I probably already said that ten times. And I know the microphone I'm not using right now is not the best. It's like midnight here. <clears throat> Okay, so the other funny story is I'm a single guy. I like being single. Sometimes I get lonely. It's like, oh, it would be nice to uh, have a partner with to go out and do stuff, take her out for dinner or whatever, go to, I don't know, watch her shopping or whatever. It would be nice to find a lady that loves it, to do, do art but will leave me alone um, six days of the week. I'll see her, talk to her 
one of those six days. <laughs> Go do something. Um, so, but I'm on this dating site, Bumble. It's called Bumble. It's a world-renowned dating site. I'm on a few dating sites, actually. So this, I'm Bumble, you have to match. You have to match with these girls, and you can't message them first. Here's a shout-out to Studio on the ba Lake. Ben, I have not forgot about the whale challenge. I know it's getting up there in time. I'm going to do it. I just, I just kind of... I just kind of don't know what I'm going to do. And I've been so busy with the spirit trails and picketing and stuff. My, my work's still on strike. But anyway, so I'm on these, uh, shout out to Studio on the Lake. Anyways, um, I'm on this, these dating sites and this girl, I matched with this girl. I'm like, oh, I hope she, hope she messages me. She's, she's good looking. She looks like she's in shape. Not that I'm, not that I'm, I'm too freaking picky. That's my problem. My sister once told me, she said, Jordy, why don't you take a look at yourself in the mirror? And I said, I do every time, every day. I wake up, I look at myself in the mirror, brush my teeth. And I'm like, all right, Jordan, have a good day. So I was thinking this girl, she was like uh, blonde. I'm like, ah, I like brunettes better. But anyways, I shouldn't be talking about, I don't really want to talk about too much personal stuff on this YouTube, but it's a funny story. So we matched. And I'm like, oh, I hope she sends me a message because I can't message her. She's got a message first. So she said, hi, Jordy, how you doing? She sent me a message. I was like, boom, it's on. I got the message. So like, oh, I'm great. Having a fantastic day. How are you doing? Then small chat, yada, 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 messages back and forth for a couple days. And she's, I told her about my job and I told her that I'm a wood carver and stuff like that. And she's, I'm like, you got any hobbies? And she's like, well, I don't know if you read my profile, but, um, and your profile says you're a Christian. And I says, yeah, I'm Christian. I believe in the almighty Jesus and God. Because knowing that that's where my mom and my family are. And my, old, my lost friends are. I didn't say that to her. But I says, yes, of course I believe. I said it in my thing. I'm a Christian. She goes, well, what makes you a Christian? I says, I don't know. I went to church when I was younger. My mom took me to church. I got a picture of my mom passed away here. And there's a pe I got a little necklace of a Jesus on a cross on her picture. So I think that makes me, and I used to go to church when I was, like, Bible school when I was a kid. Then she goes, yeah, but do you go to church? And I says, no, I don't need to. And she's like, what do you mean you don't need to? I says, well, I don't need to go to church. Um, Jesus knows who I am, and he knows what I'm up to, and he sees all the giving back. And I explained the spirit trails to her. Then she went off to tell me that um, my carvings look like there's some, um, there's a aluminum cutting bar. I'm going to do the beard hairs with that. Like I said, I got lots of videos on my playlist about how to carve the wood spirits. So she's um, just running this on angle. You'll see I'll just use the corner of the burr. So she starts drilling me, and I'm like, oh, boy. So I go talk to my neighbors. A few of my neighbors here, they were sitting out in their carport and having a coffee, and I went and asked them because they go to church. They have their little church group here or wherever. So I said, so this hot chick's, like, uh, she's religious. I told her I'm Christian. But she's trying to get me to prove like how I'm Christian. They're like, what do you mean? I says, well, what do you mean? What do I mean? She's trying to get me to prove how I'm Christian, how I'm religious. I said, well, just tell her that you believe in Jesus. And tell her about the spirit trails and all the stuff that you do for everybody. I'm like, I did. But she, and she starts telling me that, you know, I need to go to church because I need to. He, he thinks I'm lonely because I'm not with them, the church people. I'm not against the people going to church. But she says, Jesus thinks I'm lonely if I don't go to church and be with them. And they shook their head and they said, Jordy, you don't need to explain yourself to her. And I said, yeah, but she's cute. And, you know, like, I, I'm going to go for it. So what can I say? And they said a bunch of stuff. They just laughed. So she starts sending me all these. I'm trying my best, people here. I'm trying. Like, I'm saying, okay, George, she's a good one. You got to grab her. But then I'm starting to realize she's a little bit too religious for me. Not that I have anything against that, but... You know, I ain't going to church, I'll tell you that much. I don't need to. I know what I know what it takes to be good, and I know what it takes to be bad. So she's sending me all these verses from the Bible. And she told me that my car, because I sent her pictures of my wood spirits. She says they look like um G something back in the Jesus culture, like they 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 have eyes and ears, but they can't see and they can't hear or something. I don't know. Some of you um, church people, Christian people might know that. So she sends me all these verses out of the Bible. I can't remember everything. All these different verses out of the Bible. And um, 
I'm trying my best to seem like I know what, like it's on. Yeah, I, I know what's going on. I, I know the whole deal with the Jesus and the, the higher power and stuff like that. And she, and she goes, well, how do you know that, how do you know that he knows that you're, I forget how she said it, but I'm going to leave it like simple terms. How, she goes, how do you know that he knows that you're worthy of heaven? I said, well, he watches me. She goes, how do you know that? And I said, this is kind of where it was getting ridiculous and I was kind of playing. I says, well, he talks to me. And she says, well, what does he say? And where does he talk to you? I said, well, he talks to me in my heart and my soul. And she goes, what does he say? And he said, you're doing a great job, Jordy. You don't need to do anything different that you need to do. You do not need to go to church. I know that you're here. You're giving back and you're doing fantastic. So keep being you. So here's a cuts all bit. That's the gold one, and I'm going to cut the, the walking stick because it's a bigger piece of wood. The beard hairs with this. More fluent, not so choppy. I said, so Jesus, he knows, he knows who I am. He knows about the spirit trails, and he knows that I'm giving back, and I'm trying to earn my spot up top, and I'm doing a great job, and keep it up. And she goes, really? And she goes, so you think that you're going to earn your spot in heaven by just giving people giving people things i says i don't i do it i don't care if i don't do it as gifts i just do it as to give back from my heart and she went on and on and on and on and on and i was trying my best and then i was getting a little defensive and i says okay this is just a little bit too overpowering for me she likes church a little bit too much for me not that there's anything against it but if i ended up dating her she, i would have to go to church with her and that ain't going to happen. So she said something. I says, look. I forget what she said. She sent me all these different verses. And oh man, it went on and on and on for hours. This We're talking the same night here we're talking. And I was trying to edit a video too. But this is, this is the funny part. And I knew, I knew it was going to be, okay, this is it. And she said something about like, once again, how do you know that you're going to be there? I says, I'm not, the, Jesus already told me. I, even me saying I believe in him, I believe him, I believe in him, is all I need to say. He hears it. He feels it. And I'm not saying it just to say it. I do. I do believe in Jesus because I want to see my mom. My mom's up there somewhere. And if he doesn't like because I want to see my mom, I guess I won't see him. I don't know. But she said something. I says, okay. I says, well, maybe this is, the, this is it. And I knew she probably wouldn't talk to me after this. And she didn't talk to me after this. She said, have a good night. She called me Jordan. I don't like it when people call me Jordan because it either means, my, that's my middle name. My real name is David Jordan Johnson. But I go by Jordy from Jordan. But when people call me Jordan, it either means I'm in trouble, like going to jail, or I'm in the hospital. So I don't like it when people call me Jordan. Call me Jordy. Anyways, I said to her, I says, you know what? I says, when, when it's both our times, our time's up and we're both in heaven or whatever they want to call it. And I'm, this is the kicker. I'll be sitting at the table right beside Jesus. And you come along, you're, I see that you're super hungry. I said, don't worry. I'll give you a piece of bread. <laughs> and then I, then I said, then I pushed it really. This is what I said. This is going to be the real kicker. I says, I'll even put lots of butter on it for you, too. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that. Maybe I'll say it more clear. I'll take the microphone off my shirt and talk right into the mic. I said, you know what? When it's both our time, I'm sure we'll meet again up in heaven. And when I'm sitting in the, at the lunch or dinner table right beside Jesus and I see you come up and I know you're hungry, don't worry. I'll be the one giving you a piece of bread and I'll put some extra butter on it for you. That's when she said, okay, Jordan, uh, have a good night. And I says, yep, you too. That's the story. So here is the, uh, and anybody out there that's firm believers in Jesus or in, in Christian, um, I hope that didn't insult you, but you know what? I'm doing what I can do. I'm uh, trying to be good as I can be good. Like I said, I know how to be bad too, but I don't. I try my best not to be bad. I try harder to be good. Anyways, I'm going to stop this voiceover and then I'll 
do it again so I don't lose it because I don't want to have to tell that story over again. Okay, so that's safe. Good. Uh, I listened to it back and I want to say sorry for the... This microphone is not the best microphone. So I hope you guys can hear. All right. I did have music on here, but I took the music off too. So there's the two pieces. So, you know, I like them good like this. And here's kind of where I wreck it. So this cane, I forget the name of, you guys might know some of you carvers out there, what they usually make this cane out of walnut or whatever. Oh no, man, we're only, we're, what am I going to talk about now? We're only, um, we're only at the eagle head. So I do a failed attempt at a eagle head on the end of the cane. And you got to remember like the eagle's beak in real life, the tip of it's super thin and fragile. <clears throat> so I left, you got to leave it kind of bulky on the tip of the beak because you you got to think that people have canes they're not going to be so gentle with the cane every time when they put it down they're not going to be thinking oh no i got to put it down super soft because i'm going to break the eagle's beak so i leave the beak on there a little bit thicker this is a cheap chinese cutter burr i started off with this but then i realized this wood and there's the cuts all silver burr the taper burr I realize this wood is way too soft for me to use that burr. You can see it's digging, it's wide grain. And um, yeah, I changed my mind. And here's a time lapse. I got the cuts all burr on there. I just, I don't spend a lot of time on this, on this walking stick. Maybe I spent 20 minutes. So there's um, kind of an eagle head. They ask whoever wants this cane. I'm just going to keep this cane around in case a friend needs it. They ask what it is. I'll say, I don't know, it's a bird head. So this is where I ruined it. This is a little butane torch. Because the wood, all wood's different. And this wood did, really didn't take a burn too, too well. I burnt it. Like, doing that's good where I did it down the beard hairs. But I burned the face a little bit too much. And if you, the burn goes deep inside the wood... And when you go to sand away the burn, it sands away your detail. You know, I got to pull my wood burning uh, pen out. I haven't used that in a while, but I'll be doing lots more Dremel carving once the bad weather comes. I, uh, I got to also start carving Christmas trees. There's a store, a lady has a store in town here. A uh, pretty artsy, fartsy store. It's actually a pretty neat store. Lots of different cool art stuff in there. And um, she sells my stuff. So I got to keep on top of having lots of small carvings for her. There's Minwax, my favorite color. That's Bombay Mahogany. And I just, oh, I sanded the stick first. I, I got my round orbit sander. And I sanded all the shine off the stick. The whole stick before I did it. Sorry, everybody. I should have said that right away. So there was no clear finish on it. It was all off. And I sanded the uh, the walking staff too. So I got the Dr. Liz gloves on. Hi Liz, if you watch this. And this, I didn't have anything to thin out this Bombay Mahogany uh, poly shade. But um, it's pretty um, well, coagulated. It's, so it means it's getting pretty thick. I need to get some mineral spirits to mix it up. So there I'm just kind of wiping it on. Don't forget to sign your pieces. So that's that. And I wipe it on and then I wipe it off. So if you wipe it off, I'm just looking at how shitty that face looks. I miss some spots. If you wipe it off, it doesn't um, go so deep and it won't make the wood go so dark. But it's not acting as the full because it's a poly shade. It's polyurethane, right? So when you're wiping it off too, you're taking lots of the protectant sealant off of it at the same time. But I don't care. Once this thing dries, you can spray it, spray it with a clear coat. So you see the burning there? I kind of just burnt it too much. That's my own fault. I don't want to spend much more time on this. Here's the... Oh yeah, so I said screw it. I got some sandpaper. I usually do this with my flap sander hooked up to the Dremel. Those flap sanders you get on my uh, Amazon channel too. I'm not too sure if Pete uh, Blair makes them anymore. 
but the ones I get on Amazon, they work just fine for me, and you get like six for ten bucks. Pizza, pizza are better quality, but uh, I don't know if he's making them anymore. We've kind of gone our own ways. I have nothing bad to say about the man, but we've just sometimes friends just need to go their own ways. So I'm trying to sand, sand back the highlights on the face here so you can see. It's like 220 sandpaper too, so it's not that aggressive. And it plugs up when you're trying to do it too with the poly shade. I'm just touching up some missed miss spots. This cane had a rubber stopper on it too. But if you guys don't have the rubber stoppers on your cane, you know, we in Canada, I don't know in the States, but we have London Drugs here. But just you can go to your pharmacy store and they will have the bottoms uh, rubber things for the bottoms of canes or walking sticks. Here's the walking stick. So this is Arbutus. And I know the hard, Arbutus is a hardwood. I know the harder the wood is, the less. The harder the wood is, the less this stuff will suck into it. Because it's got, I don't know what it is, but it's harder. Maybe it has less pores or something. But And I do the same thing. I'm wiping it off right now. Probably not on camera. There it is. So there's the cane. Just a quick carving. Face doesn't look that great. But it's a face. You know, it's, Somebody still like to have this if they needed it. Right? This isn't going to be... I could sell this. Trust me, I could sell it. But I'm just going to keep it around for um, friends. I have a couple more canes. I always look for them when I go to the thrift store. I have a couple more. So you see I did it all the way down. I'm gonna, I'll make a better video this winter. There's the bottom. So that bottom was on the cane when I bought it. I pull it off. Good. Bang. Still fits. Put her back on. Ready to go. Wait, so it's good to, if you have a walking stick, it's good to measure the size. You can get the bottoms to make the size for the bottom of the walking stick. So here's the walking stick. You see I didn't burn it. See how much better it looks. You can see it's a face. And I didn't, I spent maybe, I didn't spend, too, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just letting you guys know I didn't spend that much time on it. I'm just trying to kill some time so I didn't feel the tooth pain. The tooth hole pain. So I, you can see it has, that's the Arbutus, it grows spirally. So it has the cracks. So I put, make sure the bomb, the mahogany, the bomb bait, the poly shade goes in the friggin' cracks. And so you get that. Now I'm going to, I think I'm going to sound the high points. This whiter wood, when you do it, when you sound the higher points and you get the colors to pop out, it makes it more dimensional. And I, I go along down the whole walking stick and I sound some higher points and it kind of looks like bone. But this is, um, I did wrap a handle like uh, I got some twine, some fishing twine, some thicker stuff, and I did a kind of a braid thing, like an old fishing knot braid uh, around the handle. I don't know if you guys, these are my least favorite things to carve on YouTube or at my Dremel table because I have the back wall there, right? So I can't, it's hard, really hard to show all the way down. But here I am going along the whole thing. And you'll see, like, see, it kind of kind of looks like bone. Just looks like an old weathered piece of stick bone. That's what it is. Yeah, so I'm going to go get a nice big fat bowl of ice cream before I go to bed. Hope I wake up and my ribs feel better. I got a big, huge um, cabinet for my chainsaw carving tent. So I can get rid of that stupid filing cabin I got in there. We can start putting and get rid of that other cabinet where I got the eagle and the owl on there. The Uncle Kevin owl that me and him and Ryan carved, I can put them on the cabinet. I also got that from uh, Joe's uncle's place too. It was going to go to the dump. I said, no, no, I'll take it. When you use those sanders, turn your dremels down or you're afraid of your dremel. So here it is. Here's the walking stick done. That's actually in the store for the ladies if she sells it or not. I don't know. Thankfully, she's going to sell all my Christmas trees for me this year. i got to start carving the trees. i got to get those slabs out of my tent. They just they don't fit good in there. So I might do some wall murals too. Practice carving some different type things. And here's the cane. 
So the face didn't turn out that good, but it's okay. You can see it's a face. See how I see all those hairs? How I sanded away the detail? Too much sanding. Yep, that's it everybody. If you got any ideas of what you want to see me Dremel carve, I'd love to hear below like smaller carvings on little sticks or anything. And uh, that's it for this one.